Are you hitting your shots way too high? They're spinning and you're not getting the distance that you wish. There's a good chance you are not getting enough shaft lean at the moment of impact and getting that compression. Well, look no further. This is the one video you need to watch. And with special guest, Ollie Tucker, we're gonna show you our favorite exercise to achieve that all powerful ball flight that you're looking for. Let's get stuck in. All right, Ollie, so let's have a look at trajectory. And I've middled that one, it was probably the best of the day. Uh, and we can see this graph up the top here. And this is, what is this? That's the sort of window for optimal launch conditions. So anywhere between that, depending on like your ball flight, mm -hmm. you're, you're sort of maxing out your carry and your distance by being very efficient at impact. Yeah, very efficient at impact. That's uh, a great use. So we can see that the numbers here relative to achieving this trajectory. Uh, 7-iron went 187, hit it quite well, slightly stronger off the club here, that's why it went further than the optimal. Yep. But if we are looking at uh, ball speeds in the graph, uh, launch angle, as you can see, right is in the middle. Now, what would happen if this launch angle was up at 20? So let's say the launch was all the way up here. What would happen there? So obviously, launching higher, you get a lot more height, mm -hmm. and it's going to fall short of that optimal carry. Okay, yeah. So why don't I recreate one, right? I'm going to purposely add a little bit more loft, and then we'll relate this back to uh, a floor that a lot of players would struggle with in their, their golf game, yeah. okay? So I'm gonna purposely add a little bit more loft. So the launch angle on the last one was 16 degrees, and we can see that the ball lands pretty much at the end of that blue yeah, good shot. window. Add a little bit more loft, try and make it the same speed as I can. So I feel like that was similar speed. We can look at that. Right, so club head speed uh, was very similar, but look at how high that launched and then finished well short of where it would have liked. So yeah, we see this a lot. This is, and that's a good shot. It's at your target mm -hmm. and players hitting a 7 iron 170 are gonna be like fairly happy with that most of the time. Yep. But it's that speed, which was even a little bit faster than last time, you're 20 yards plus down on how far that could have gone just because of that impact condition yeah. and that lofty impact. Let's just clarify this number. So the last one said 180 yep. for optimal, and that's based on the club head speed. So club head speed and the loft of the club as well. At the moment of impact. Yep. And this one, I swung it faster, Yep. right? And the optimal was 199 yards with a seven iron, which is decent. Yep. And I only carried it 172, but to be honest, I pew with that. And I feel like a lot of players struggle with this. They go, well, I'm hitting it really good. Kind of feels nice off the face, but it's simply just not carrying as far as I think. And the main reason being is? Just not being efficient and optimal impact, which is, this is a very underused screen, I think, on Trapman. So you can see attack angles popped up a little bit. Yep. You get some basic numbers here related to the optimal carry. Mm -hmm. And like you've done there, great example, launching it too high, or not optimal, certainly. Attack angles up, you get more spin loft, which is the dynamic loft, so loft mm -hmm. impact and your attack angle. We'll get back to that video in just a second, but I just want to tell you quickly about my online training platform, Perform Golf. Being a player myself and going through the struggles of working on my game all the way up to playing on tour, I understand that nagging feeling that you're putting work in that's not actually making a difference to your swing and your golf game. So that's why I've created an all-encompassing membership covering every aspect of the game to help you fast track your progress and get you shooting lower scores. It's available on all the app stores and on the web. The link is down below. So sign up now, experience the difference yourself. Let's get back to the video. Mm -hmm. So if we get... So club's not coming down as much. It's so club rising. was, let's say it was, this was your dynamic loft here and you're hitting down a little bit. Yep. You've got that angle yep. and that angle here. Yep. That is the spin loft angle. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the greater this number here, and as the golf club's coming in and it's shallower, essentially the ball is going to spin more. Yep, correct. Right? And because I'm not hitting enough down and compressing it, then essentially it's going to rise a lot faster off yep. the, the club base. So the first one, which I hit really, really well, was actually descending a few degrees more, yep. about four degrees, and the face was actually shut down as well, correct? Yeah, correct. So we had somewhere here for mm -hmm. the dynamic loft, so loft mm -hmm. impact, mm -hmm. and here and down, let's say, you know, this amount. Yep. On the last one we had, Added a lot more loft, yep. hitting slightly up. You can see that's the straight Much away. bigger angle, much more spin. Yeah. Launching too high. So this would be a player who's scooping it? Uh, yes, certainly. Yeah, okay. So let's say that path and face is good, impact is okay, but I'm scooping it, I wanna hit the ball lower. 
simply by trying to hit, what, hit punch shots? Or how would you go about optimizing uh, you, through the use of this feedback here to help this player launch that ball lower and get more of a compressed strike so they can max out their distance? So one of the biggest issues, and I think probably the most misunderstood, is by trying to hit it lower, players get in forward as much as they can. And it doesn't even reduce the attack angle because what tends to happen if you address like hitting that way. Mm -hmm. So if effort. I'm trying to, let's say, go, okay, I need to be more in front of it. We see players do that with their body. Yep. So now they're well ahead of it and all of a sudden they have to go here to get any sort of launch at all on the club. Correct. And you see this a lot when people are trying to keep it low by going under trees mm -hmm. and they'll go this way to keep it low loads and then that to help it. It's the type of thing. And, and, and you still hit the same problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> a myth, a myth. So let's say it's not a matter of just getting in front of the golf ball. How do we lower our flight? So it's all to do with the loft A impact. Yep. So, and again, there'd be various reasons that uh, players end up scooping, but people talk about like having the shaft leaning forward and then again, certain, a lot of ways you can do that. So that's a great uh, impact position there. We can mm -hmm. see now, obviously a little bit more shaft lean, mm -hmm. dynamic loft comes down a little bit and you're going to be probably a good chance of hitting down the ball more with the hands certainly in front of the ball or yeah. in front of the club header impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as opposed to where we would have seen on that shot that I just demonstrated before, you can see with the exact same body position, the handle goes back, the bottom of the swing would have occurred earlier, the face has added more loft, I'm going to have misstruck shots which spin too much and launch too high. Yeah. Okay, so then getting the handle forward, what's your favorite drill and exercise for helping players get the handle forward without just driving the body forward? Uh, so a bit of a classic, but tend to use the stick mm -hmm. with the grip. So we're going to stick applied down the base of the shaft here. And if I was to set up, what does this encourage us to do? Well, straight away, you'll see if you do have any sort of release or scoop too early, that is now clattering into your uh, hip. Yep. There. So we're trying to encourage, without diving forward loads, we're trying to keep the handle ahead mm -hmm. and avoid that stick flicking you around your waist. Yeah, okay. So I'll just have a couple of demonstration swings in this direction here, just get a feel of that. And the thing I really like about this drill, which I use a lot with players, is simply it encourages that body to work a lot harder through impact as well. We see a lot of players will tend to get this look, their body's stalling out, the yep. handle and face is coming into a position which is just simply too scoopy. Now. A lot of this can happen because your club face is simply open, guys, so make sure you check that first. But once you've got that, face is in a functional position, let's really work on making some small swings. And you can see as I do so, even if I go towards the camera here, that when I finish my motion, it's actually moving around my body. It's not necessarily going and holding up. My body and the arm sequence is working quite well. And then if I finish in that position, you can see it was never really close to hitting me. Yeah, and you can still finish. I think the other one we tend to get when players rehearse that is really pushing it towards the target, almost like a cricket shot. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You were seeing the cricket with the uh, England smashing the Aussies in the last <laughs> festival. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. So from the address position, I think just building a feel of going follow throughs only. Our board would like to get that club moving through without it touching the body, then making small little backswings. feeling that it's not really making contact. Now, for most players, when they do this, they're going to hit themselves. Definitely, yeah, you I'd do feel that. I've got a few bruises from that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> torture drill. Uh, so even just doing slow rehearsals, guys, it's a great way to just get the feel of what it's like to lower that. Now, that's only a very short shot, but if we look at launch angle, we can see straight away it's gone down, and it was only that tiny little graph over there on the right-hand side, but you can see how that line is actually underneath the blue one. Yeah, and you're still pretty much optimal on a much smaller shot, which is yeah. great. Yeah, so then through rehearsals of those smaller shots over and over, we simply just build up that speed, but try and get that same sensation, same feeling of the stick, ensuring that once our hands are on it, it's never really hitting our body staying in front. Really good for wedge play as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anything else you'd like to, to add through there, Brian? Oh yeah, so important to note is you demo that really well, but if you jump into your setup again with that stick there, mm -hmm. one thing really important to notice was as you came into impact, and certainly the little drill we started at impact, is you're still rotating, this is still working around your body, you're not disconnecting the arms and pushing them towards yeah. the target. Right. And we see yeah. a lot of that, exactly, yeah. Yeah, mate, let's hit one more, and then see how that launch angle comes off. Nice and low. Great exercise, as you can see, nicely under that 16. Great exercise for anyone looking to lower that launch. If your swing is working well otherwise, good face, good path, 
you need to get a little bit less lofted impact so you can maximize, get that optimal distance. Awesome drill to go about it. That's where it comes. Cheers. Mm -hmm.